In a world where interesting and spectacular animals inhabit the water, land, and sky, one of the most amazing creatures you'll ever see is probably no farther away than your own backyard. Butterflies. You've probably enjoyed their colors and flashing wings many times. For in most parts of our country, they can be seen during the spring, summer, and fall. Yet how much do you really know about these fascinating members of the animal kingdom? Where do they come from? How do they live? Let's take a look at just a few of the many answers. And I think you'll see that there's much more to a butterfly than its beautiful wings. First of all, just what is a butterfly? To a lepidopterist, the scientist who studies them, butterflies are insects, animals with six legs and bodies made up of three parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. Along with moths, they belong to a group of insects called Lepidoptera, which means scaly wing. We'll see why a little later. Although butterflies and moths look much alike, if you look closely, you'll notice some differences. Butterflies, for example, have thin antennae with knobbed or clubbed ends while a moth's antennae usually look like feathers or the edge of a comb. A butterfly's body tends to be slender and smooth. A moth's body is often thick and furry. Generally, butterflies are active during the day and rest at night, while moths are most active after the sun goes down. To date, more than 17,500 different kinds of butterflies have been identified, as compared to 9,000 kinds of birds and 4,000 kinds of mammals. They live nearly everywhere on Earth, and over 700 kinds of butterflies make the United States their home. In most cases, a butterfly's life is very short, lasting only a few weeks. But from the first day to the last, it is filled with mystery and wonder. Let's now take a look at the life cycle of one butterfly, the zebra longwing. Before a female zebra longwing can lay her eggs, she must first find an acceptable host plant. This special plant will be the source of food for her future offspring. After a careful search, she selects a passion vine. And as she lays an egg, another butterfly's life begins. In only a few days, this egg, smaller than a pinhead, will hatch, and a tiny caterpillar, or larva, slowly crawls into the world. Though less than 24 hours old, the body of this young larva is already beginning to grow. In fact, in about two weeks, it will go from looking like this, to this. How does it happen? Well, as the old saying goes, you are what you eat. A larva's life is really quite simple. Throughout the day, it does little more than eat, 
rest, and grow. This eating machine has a monstrous appetite, yet it is very choosy about its diet, devouring only the leaves of its host plant, the passion vine. While the larva gets bigger, its outer skin, the exoskeleton, stays about the same size. As you might imagine, it isn't long before this exoskeleton is outgrown, and something has to give. So the larva molts, splitting and shedding its old skin while climbing out in a newer, larger skin. Even the old head capsule is discarded. Then when the molt is complete, it's off to, what else? Another meal. As the larva grows, it molts four times. When the larva is fully grown, it stops eating and attaches itself to a twig or branch to await the next stage in its life. After a day of hanging nearly motionless, a sudden change occurs, and the larva molts for the fifth and final time, becoming a chrysalis or pupa. Within hours, the new pupa hardens and changes color. Then during the days to come, the body of an adult butterfly is formed inside as the miracle called metamorphosis takes its course. After about two weeks, the adult butterfly is fully developed and pushes its way out of the pupa. Following its dramatic entrance into the world, the newly emerged zebra longwing hangs for about an hour, as blood and other fluids are pumped into its small, limp wings, soon inflating them to their full size. At the same time, the butterfly carefully joins the two slender filaments that will become its tongue. Then when these final preparations are complete, another beautiful insect is ready to fly. This change of form, or metamorphosis, from egg, to larva, to pupa, to adult butterfly, is one of the great mysteries of nature. Yet as incredible as this development can be, the wonder that is a butterfly has only begun. Let's now take a closer look at the insect's remarkable body. A butterfly's wings are both beautiful and useful. Most wings are covered with millions of tiny scales that overlap like shingles on a roof. Remember the word Lepidoptera? It means scaly wing. If you've ever handled a butterfly, you know how easily these scales rub off on your fingers. Every day, the beautiful colors and patterns formed by the scales help meet many important needs in the insect's life, including camouflage to help hide them from their enemies. With its wings closed, this butterfly looks just like a dead leaf. Some recognizable wing patterns warn enemies of the insect's bad or poisonous taste. Those familiar orange and black markings are a monarch's way of saying to the bird community, I taste terrible, leave me alone. Wing colors and patterns also help a male butterfly 
Find and select a mate. Another fascinating purpose of the wing scales can be seen in the way a butterfly regulates its body temperature. Butterflies are cold-blooded animals. This means that the temperature of their bodies is as warm or cool as the air around them. In order to fly, their bodies must be at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Once again, their remarkable wings prove very important. They work as solar collectors, gathering the sun's heat to warm the insect's flight muscles. Early in the morning, or during a cool afternoon, you will often see butterflies with their wings outstretched or held rigidly at an angle. They're basking, soaking up heat until they are warm enough to take to the air. Like all living things, butterflies must eat. And to satisfy their continuing need for energy, they will devote much of the day to consuming food from a variety of sources, including flower blossoms and overripe fruit. A butterfly is limited to a diet which it can drink or sip, so most of its meals come from flower nectar. To reach this often hard-to-reach food, the butterfly uses its very efficient tongue called the proboscis. Working much like a drinking straw, the proboscis can be unrolled, enabling the insect to easily sip available nectar from within a flower. Sometimes, if you are very careful, you can approach a butterfly quite closely. In moments like these, take the time to observe other parts of its body. A butterfly's eyes, for example, are much different than yours or mine. While the human eye has a single lens, a butterfly's eye is compound, made up of thousands of separate lenses, allowing the insect to see in almost every direction at once. Its slender antennae are just as interesting. In fact, each day the butterfly uses them to taste, smell, feel, and navigate. Now look closely at its feet. Surprisingly, they too serve as organs of taste, helping the butterfly to quickly find not only food, but also the correct host plants on which to lay its eggs. Equipped with tiny claws, the feet allow the insect to climb and hang upside down. We have only started down an exciting road of discovery, for in all the world, there are few things more wonderful than a butterfly. In their beautiful wings and spectacular lives, some of nature's greatest mysteries are yours to explore. All it takes are a few flowers, some quiet footsteps, and the patience to look and wait. Then on a sunny day, the beauty and wonder that make our planet such a special place can be yours to discover and enjoy.